Breaking overnight, the Milwaukee suburb of Wauwatosa in chaos. Police firing tear gas at protesters throughout the night after mostly peaceful evening marches turned violent, with groups smashing windows out of businesses and even homes. The unrest erupting after the Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office decision Wednesday not to file criminal charges against Wisconsin police officer Joseph Mensa in the fatal shooting of 17-year-old Alvin Cole. The First Amendment gives the freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition. This amendment has sparked some very interesting discussions in recent years with the rise and power of social media. And those two realities will come to a head-on collision as we discuss the citations of Wauwatosa. The family attorney has tweeted out that officers arrested Tracy Cole and that Tracy Cole is in the hospital. And I should say here that uh, police said one of the women arrested tonight was a 49-year-old woman and she requested medical attention and, taken, and was taken to the hospital. They have not confirmed with us if that woman was Tracy Cole, Alvin Cole's mother. They did say that all of the demonstrators were in violation of the 7 p.m. curfew, Joyce. I'm Caroline, this is breaking. We have more information right now. The group, The People's Revolution, released a statement reading in part, it is despicable that the Wauwatosa Police Department would arrest the members of the family of Alvin Cole, who their officer killed. Your rights are the strongest in what are considered traditional public forums, such as streets, sidewalks, and parks. You also can protest in front of other public forums such as plazas or even government buildings as long as you're not blocking the entrance. So basically stick to public property and don't block traffic or building entrances. Great. Second, while you're out, it's highly likely you're going to run into a counter protester. This is okay. Look, I, I know it's annoying, but freedom of speech isn't just speech you agree with. Counter protesters have the same equal rights that you do and law enforcement must treat them equally. But hey, if you run into one of these counter protests and you don't like what they have to say, will you who shut is your, up, man? Listen, who? Three, remember, when you are lawfully present in any public space, you are allowed to film anything within plain sight. That includes government buildings and police. I mean, nobody said they had to like it, but it's not illegal. You don't need a permit to march on sidewalks or public streets, again, as long as you aren't blocking any buildings or blocking traffic. However, remember, if you don't have a permit, police can ask you to move onto the sidewalk if you're interfering with traffic. So, all this feels pretty straightforward. So where's the confusion? Well, let's rewind to what I said a minute ago. We've talked about this in previous videos, but language is so important when talking about upholding the law. Words like lawfully should be pretty straightforward, but when the law of the freedom of assembly is judged by whether something looks peaceful or not, it gets a little murky. I mean, you have to admit it is a little nonsensical to call the act of protest to protect our civil liberties peaceful. Okay, well, how about the term nonviolent? See, that can be interpretive as well. Our leaders can't even decide what should be considered violent versus nonviolent protests. And this is a huge problem for us as law-abiding citizens who wish to exercise our rights. I mean, and it should be pretty straightforward, right? No harming other people, no defamation of property. Well, except for the Boston Tea Party, a symbol of American patriotism where we dumped 342 boxes of tea imported from the British East India Company, but it's more convenient to forget, so let's just move on. Here's something you should look up. 2017 already is a year of historic levels of protest. To give one example, the Women's March um, was, according to many experts, the single greatest day of turnout in the streets by citizens in the history of America. And the whole point of lifting up your voice is making sure that your elected officials hear you. And we're seeing a really alarming trend of bills across the country introduced in state legislatures that would criminalize, penalize, protected protest. And some of these bills are dressed up as bills that have to do with obstruction or public safety. But frankly, these bills have one intent and effect, and that is to suppress dissent. And we are seeing these bills in states where there has been that kind of historic protest. In North Dakota, there's a bill that says, literally, if you're driving and you kill a protester, you won't be charged with vehicular manslaughter. So it's important for activists to know these bills are out there. Uh, it's important to know the ACLU has your back. We're out there trying to fight these bills back. But I think as citizens, we should all be upset and we should be telling our legislators we're upset that at a time of historic protest, when people are making their voices heard to their government, that these elected officials in the states, rather than listening to those voices and engaging with them, are trying to silence them. That's unconstitutional. 
It's un-American, and we at the ACLU will do everything we can to stop it. The ACLU fought back and many bills died or were amended to remove unconstitutional language. However, a few states passed with heavier restrictions and fewer protections for the citizens. Want some examples? How about Minnesota's pay to protest bill, which simply says the protester who violates the law could be sued for the full cost of the police response. Tactics like laying spike strips on the ground to halt car caravans and mailing people $1,300 citations after social media videos surface of them out past curfew? Is it a matter of protecting protesters or preventing them from protesting? St. Petersburg police are warning demonstrators it's fine if they want to protest on the sidewalk, but they will get a fine if they move into the street. Eight on your side's Chip Osowski explains. Okay, this is crazy, so I'm just going to read this next part to you. For some of the protesters, the reason behind these citations were riddled with controversy, including false claims of obstruction and giving false information to an officer. The WPD said, obstruction and false information is just another auto-generated tag that gets put on every citation? This is a conversation that needs to be in the foreground as we move into the new year. The First Amendment is too important. It is what gives power to the people and ensures that we live in a free and open democracy. Whether you agree with what's being said or not, it is the backbone of our Constitution and needs to be upheld. So, what do you think?